We are officially 29 days away from the NFL draft. What would a first round look like today? What would it look like if we used my big board? We're going to kind of take a look at multiple different scenarios by going through all 32 picks in the first round of the NFL draft and use it as kind of a primer to continue the conversation surrounding what could happen in April's annual selection meeting. Welcome to the Real Farno Show. by Tyler Fornis, the managing editor of USA Today's Vikings Wire, writer for the College Football Network, publisher of Substack Run In Shooter, host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, as well as a founding member of Vikings First and Skull. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of The Real Forno Show. I'm your host, Tyler Fornos. With me, as always, in the top right corner is producer Dave, and we are going to deliver a one-round mock draft. Now, th- there's been quite a few things happening in the course of the Viking sphere. A lot of discussion about trading up, a lot of discussion about should it be J.J. McCarthy, should it be Drake May, should it be Jay Daniels. What happens if we aren't able to trade up? There, we've gone over the scenarios numerous, numerous times. And we'll keep going over those over the course of the next 29 days. Drake May's Pro Day, Thursday. So there will be news coming out of that. But we thought it'd be a good idea to go through a full first round simulation, give you the general idea of what prospects will be where, what could happen in certain situations if one guy goes higher than expected, one guy falls, because those always happen. So we're going to do a full mock draft simulation all 32 teams using my big board as a guide. Dave, <laughs> let's get it started. Let's have some fun. Let's do it. Welcome to Vikings First and Skulls Mock Draft Mondays. the Vikings pick and who's your favorite choice all right as we can see Dave's Twitter account as he gets everything all squared away with the PFF mock draft simulator we are going to draft for all 32 teams in round one. Now, a couple teams don't have picks. Uh, the Houston Texans no longer have a first-round pick. Cleveland Browns do not have a first-round pick. And Carolina Panthers do not have a first-round pick. They do have the 33rd overall pick, which is as close as you can physically get. But they lost that because of the trade for Bryce Young. And we are going to go through all the picks not going to do trades, though. I'm not going to kind of take a look and jump around and do trades. We're just going to kind of make it as easy and smooth as possible. And that is going to be just making all 32 picks. We'll we'll have some discussions about, hey, could a trade fit here? Could a trade fit there? We're not going to do trades. Except for maybe the Vikings. I, I might trade for the Vikings just because, well, that's what this show is about. So... Well, Dave, you know they're up. going to uh, they're going to trade. Mm-hmm. Well, we believe they're going to trade. Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? That's that's the wild part. We just don't. Okay. Start Chicago Bears number one overall. Here's what's going to happen. It's going to be Caleb Williams. So we'll we'll just pencil that in really quick. It'll be Caleb Williams and. Williams, for most people, is the number one quarterback on the board. Generational type talent. I don't think he's the number one quarterback in this class. I have him as my eighth overall player and second ranked quarterback. Everybody knows how I feel about Drake May. That's been pretty consistent. I watched him over the summer and 
I thought that that was the case as well. But we're going to go Caleb Williams first overall to the Bears just because that's that's what's going to end up happening. All right. So second overall is kind of where the draft really begins. What do the Washington commanders want to do? Do they want to take Jaden Daniels? Do they want to take Drake may word from the NFL owners meetings was, Hey, maybe they want JJ McCarthy, but that is a weird one because it wasn't technically a report. It was Tom Pelissero asking other general managers and executives what they think Adam Peters will do. And that's all hypothetical. It's a guess. So it's not actual steam that they want JJ McCarthy, but I thought it was very fascinating to kind of watch that. And then Daniel Jeremiah, I believe was on the Pat McAfee show this morning and said that, look, that wasn't really a report, but the steam is real with JJ McCarthy. He is getting that kind of buzz around the league. Look, we're 29 days out. We may know quite a bit and we still know absolutely nothing. That's that needs to get out right away. We really don't know what's going to happen. We really don't know anything right now. It's just a, a weird scenario. So let's uh, let's talk about the commander's pick. I think it's going to be between two guys, Jaden Daniels and Drake May. You'll hear a lot of people say, oh, Jaden Daniels fits more of what Cliff Kingsbury wants to do on offense. Yeah, probably. But the one thing people are missing is Drake may also uh, threw in the air raid, just like Jane Daniels did. So it, it's not like may isn't a fit, but when I take a look at these guys, I think may is the better player. I do lean that they're going to go with Jane Daniels. So we're going to, we're going to pencil that in. I think Jaden Daniels, he's my quarterback three, my 10th overall player. He is 0.1 points behind Caleb Williams. But I do think, when you, when you look at what he brings to the table, I think Cliff Kingsbury is going to be going to really, really like that. I don't know if it's necessarily the best pick. I think Drake may would be the best pick, but I have him as my, my number two overall player, but Daniels is one heck of a, a talent. And I think that if he can ever figure out how to slide and not get hit, like he's a wily e. coyote going against a roadrunner, then I think that he he can be a really good football player for a while. So Jaden Daniels, there has been some steam there. I'm going to stick with that steam and we're going to have him go at second overall. Now, what about his elbow? The bursa sack. Oh, I'm, I'm not worried about it until uh, somebody tells me I have to be worried about it. That picture that, uh, um, Ian Rappaport like shared today. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know if that's a real picture. It, it like, looked photoshopped. Yeah, it did. So I'm not worried about it. And you know what? If it's a bursa sack, you clean it up. You you have the surgery now, now that your pro day is done, and then you're ready to throw in a few weeks. Like, that's fine. Well, and that was taken during the season because mm-hmm. – for his pro day, one, he was in uniform, and for his pro day, he was wearing long sleeve purple t shirt. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not super worried about it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just not worried about it. If somebody tells me I need to be worried about it, I will be, but I don't think that there's anything there at this point. Now comes third overall. This is where the draft is going to get extra, extra interesting. There continues to be steam coming out of New England that they're open to for business. They're open to making a trade. Will they make a trade? Pfft, who the hell knows? Nobody really knows what New England is going to do here. If the Vikings can make a godfather offer to get Drake May before uh, J.J. McCarthy, I would do it because I think Drake May is better enough to be worthy of sending that extra draft capital where I think it would be more settling for JJ McCarthy. And this is my personal opinion. Other people disagree and that's fine. That's the beauty of this whole process. 
you're going to have people with different opinions. And talking to people with different opinions, I think is good. I don't see the Delta being close enough to where I would just take one of them. I would target Drake May. Ooh, and sorry. getting Drake May, I think, would be the smart pick for the Vikings. But I am also not convinced they're going to be able to trade up here. The other interesting factor is what happens if they don't like the quarterbacks, but they just take Marvin Harrison Jr. That's a real possibility. For my money, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best player in this draft. He is the best player in this draft by five points on my grading scale. And to me, that's not even close. Like, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is complete. If his name was Chris Johnson and not Marvin Harrison Jr., I would still think that highly of the player. The pedigree does help you feel a little bit more confident because you know he grew up with an elite wide Hall of Fame wide receiver as a dad. So there's just an extra level. Um, there was a brilliant article uh, written by Andrew Marchand at The Athletic talking about nepotism in broadcasting and how it's prevalent. But the real interesting thing is he, the, he ended up talking to Noan Eagle, whose dad is Ian, who's going to end up calling the Final Four this year. He's been working for CBS for decades. He's been doing stuff for like the New Jersey Nets and the NBA and NFL for a long time. Joe Buck, his dad was obviously Jack Buck, called multiple World Series, was a legendary radio broadcaster. They talked about the nepotism thing, but they also said, like, look, he gave us an advantage at, with our names, but at the end of the day, it gave us an advantage that is just different and special because Joe started, like, pretend calling games when he was six. And if you have that where I want to be able to do this, I want to follow in my dad's footsteps, and I can learn from one of the best ever, I think that matters a little bit more than the name because like when I was a kid, I wanted to be Pat Summerall. I wanted, I wanted to call games. I wanted to work with a guy like John Madden and I wanted to be able to bring life to the game that I love. Well, I didn't have those kind of opportunities, which, which is fine. Like I'm not bitter about it, but if my dad was Jack Buck, I would probably be where Joe Buck is right now because I would have started as a young child. And I think like when it comes to the nepotism discussion, it's both sides of the coin. It's yeah, you're probably going to get into the door because of your last name and who your parents are. But you also have that advantage where you've been practicing for so long and wanting to do this and been trying to hone your craft where, hey, you also have the skills to do it. And I think that's an interesting discussion when you're having the conversation about nepotism. And Marvin Harrison Jr. had that privilege of his dad being a hall of famer at the same position he plays. And I don't think that like his name should necessarily be held against him. And I don't think people are holding his name against him, but I think it gives him just an inherent advantage to be better with, uh, as far as a floor and a ceiling than it would any other prospect. And if you want to take him at three, I completely get it. I, I, I'm not going to drink a lot more. I'm, I'm fine there. I, I have plenty of booze at home. I, I just like to have a cocktail every now and then. Don't worry about me. Um, if you want to take Marvin Harrison Jr., I completely understand. However, I think the Patriots are going to end up making a pick at quarterback. That That's my lean right now. I think they're going to take a quarterback, and I think it will be Drake May. So we're going to pencil that in. We're going to pencil in Drake May at number three. It hurts me to do it. Because Drake May is that good, and I'm going to pray to God he ends up a Minnesota Viking. I'm not convinced he's going to be, because it would not shock me to see him go two or three. And I don't think the Vikings, no matter what they offer, are going to be able to convince one of those teams to give up the chance to go get him. Right, Odie? Yeah. Odie's finally chewing on a bone. It's... it's uh been a long week for him all right well yeah, now at the put up or shut up point in the draft mm -hmm. pick four yep um this one we're not even going to have a conversation just pencil and marvin harrison jr i think this is they are going to have the conversation about trading they're going to have the conversation about trading down and then trading back up like they did last year but i think it's a little bit different going from three to 12 and then back up to six 
versus what they would be doing here, which would be four to 11 and then five. They may not actually gain any physical capital worthy of actually being able to make that move. And if Marvin Harrison Jr. is at five, I think that's going to end up being the play. I, I think they would just jump on it. So now you have five Los Angeles Chargers. They have a really big need at tackle. They have a bigger need at wide receiver. They have quite a few needs. And this is a team in transition. Obviously, they tried to make a run, one last run with the core that they had. Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack probably going to be moved on from after this year. They're on lesser deals right now. They just moved on from Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. This is a team that's in full blown in transition. Not necessarily a rebuild, but they could use extra capital to be able to get more players in the building. I think this is where the Vikings end, end up will end up trading. And I think they would give up 11 and 23. So this we're going to end up making one trade and it's going to be this one. And we're going to trade up for JJ McCarthy. I hope I really, really, really hope that this is a trade up for Drake may. I would be happier for a trade up with Jaden Daniels than with JJ McCarthy. When I was on uh, purple daily last week and we did that super mock Thor, I had a little bit of a monologue talking about the differences between McCarthy and Daniels in an overall talent vacuum. I think it's Daniels without a question, but fit matters. And I think McCarthy fits here so much like a glove where I think that the Vikings might want to take McCarthy over Daniels. I don't know for sure. I don't have any sources in the building that are telling me this, that, or the other thing. I don't know for a fact. I'm not living inside the walls at TCO Performance Center. But that's kind of where my lean is right now, where I think the trade-up would be for J.J. McCarthy. Both firsts. And Nothing else. Both firsts. Just... I think 11 and 23 gets it done. The only caveat here is what happens if teams try to upbid you. And if they do, then you have Trade to be accepted. really concerned. So, well, there's we're going to take a couple you, teams what? that could try Denver and New oh. York and or yeah, there's, Las Vegas as well. But there's a hundred percent teams that can try, but will they, we don't know. And we're pro- not going to know until a lot closer to the draft. And we may not even know till after the draft who else was calling. Cause sometimes those conversations happen. They also get released in those like videos, like the Vikings do the voyage. Mm-hmm. Like, we may find out then we may never find out, but this is kind of w- what, where my lean is here. I think the Vikings want to making a trade with five, 11 and 23. Maybe they get something back. But for ease sake, we're going to just do 11 and 23 straight up. <clears throat> so now we are on to the New York Giants. They need a wide receiver and they need a wide receiver with size. And I don't think that's being discussed enough. I think Malik neighbors is great, but they have nobody really with size. They're all smaller guys like Wandale Robinson, Sterling Shepard. You get Romo Dunze, who runs a four, four, who uh, jumps out of the gym. Great contested catches, smooth in the open field. And Odunze ranks one spot ahead of Malik Neighbors for me on my big board. I'm going to take Romo Odunze, the wide receiver from Washington here, and I think it just makes too much sense. In a wide receiver room, you want to build a basketball team. You want to have diversity in who is in your room so you can ask them to do different things because the standard positions are the X, which is your bigger guy, the Y, which is more your crafty route runner, and your sorry, that Y is the slot, and Z is like your crafty route runner. Maybe he's got some explosiveness with him too. Um, so that is that's the direction I would go there. <clears throat> Clifford, when you said uh, Denver does not have the clout, they could if they add an active player like Sertan. Yeah. All right. Seven Tennessee Titans. Malik neighbors is an interesting one here. The Titans have done a great job of kind of rebuilding that offensive line, but they still have a whole of tackle. And I think taking a tackle makes a lot of sense here. Now 
you take a look at my board, I have a lot of tackles in my top 15. I've got five of them, actually. Uh, Amarius Mims from Big Georgia round, is seventh. Man. He's seventh overall. Joe Alt is ninth overall. Olufushanu at 11. Talias Fuaga at 14 and Tyler Guyton at 15. Then I've got Troy Fautanu at 16 and JC Latham at 17. There's a lot of talent in this class. I have graded eight offensive tackles so far, eight first round grades. I was really, really impressed with this tackle class as of now. So which tackle do they take? I'm going to trust my board here. I'm going to take Amarius Mims, the tackle from Georgia. And the reason why I'm taking Amarius Mims in, instead of uh, Alt or Fashanu, I think when you look at what the Rank Carthen had in San Francisco when he was an assistant there, you have Trent Williams. Trent Williams is a super freak. Trent Williams is an absolute athletic specimen. What is Amarius Mims? Super freak athletically. 6'7", 340, and moves like a dream. He he's, hasn't played that often because he's dealt with some injuries, but when he's played, he's been dominant. So if you feel comfortable with the medicals, which I don't really get into with my evaluations too much because there's just too much information I don't have, so I try to just grade off the film. Mims is the best tackle film in this class. He mainly played right side, but he can play left, and I think that this, this would be a great path for the Tennessee Titans. Marius Mims at seventh overall. Good football player. Now, let's talk about the Atlanta Kirko chains. They're at eighth <laughs> overall. This might be a good trade down spot for them to try and uh, maybe get some capital for next year because Kirk's contract is going, it's, I mean, look, it is what it is, but with some of their younger guys needing extensions, being able to bring in some younger talent might be a priority. So trading back could be an option for them. Plus, do they really want to take the first defensive player off the board at eighth overall? I don't know. Um, what they have never had is an edge rusher, a great edge rusher. They had Vic Beasley for a year who had like 16 sacks. Outside of that, there really hasn't been a talented edge rusher so we're going to go that that direction and we're going to go a guy that doesn't necessarily get a lot of love we're going to go chop robinson from penn state now it's going to feel like a surprise and that's okay the entire industry is lower on chop robinson than me he's fourth on my board i think his game is phenomenal i think he's great at the point of attack yeah he, he lacks a tiny bit of length he's got like 32 and 5 8 inch arms and his play strength is not suspect. It's inconsistent. So when you take those two things in consideration, yeah, it, it feels a little high. But he's got the quickest get off of the ball of anybody I've seen in a long time. And he can win in run defense by being really aggressive and penetrating on the inside. Like he's not going to stand up blockers and then do the peek and shed. So he's holding your blocker. Then you peek over this shoulder and then you kind of throw him and go around. Like he, he doesn't really do that. He just, he's just explosive. He's kind of like a wrecking ball. So I think chop Robinson is deserving of a top 10 pick, even though their industry will disagree with me. I'm okay. Dying on that Hill. Some Hills. I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm probably wrong. I don't think I'm wrong on chop Robinson and I'm going to go down with the ship. Ninth overall Chicago bears. This one will be easy. They need a wide receiver. And Malik Neighbors is still on the board. We're going to take Malik Neighbors and nothing twice. Easy peasy. Same with the New York Jets. Joe Alt is still on the board. It's my ninth overall player, second ranked tackle. Take Joe Alt. Don't think twice. You have Tyron Smith. You have Morgan Moses. Joe Alt is a cornerstone style left tackle. Now, one thing that's interesting here, you could have taken Talias Fuaga because then you could just put him in at right guard now while Moses is playing. And then you can just kick him out to right tackle when Moses it moves on probably after this year, but alt is too good. And Tyron Smith can play right tackle. I don't know if Joe alt can, but Tyron Smith definitely can. He's proven it in the league. So I'll, I'll take alt here. Nothing twice. Now you have the chargers. 
They could take Fashanu. They could take Fuaga. Brock Bowers is an interesting option for them. And with the receivers gone, that's that's the route I'm going to go. I'll, I'll take Brock Bowers. He's 13th on my board. I'm a little more concerned with where he's going to be at on a long-term basis because I don't know how fast he is. I, I don't know how much some of that speed and quickness I see on film is going to translate one-to-one to the NFL with some of his usage because they use him with like jet sweeps and stuff. I'm, I'm, I just don't know. I want to see what the pro day testing is so I can feel confident in w- like what he's going to be able to do as a projection. But in college, he was great to watch and he could do a little bit of everything. And if that college tape translates directly to the NFL, he's going to be a weapon. Watch out. Brock Bowers to the Chargers at 11. And that leaves us, Dave. You don't the think Denver Broncos. Harbaugh's going offense or defensive line. Here. No. Uh, because it's it's an incredibly deep offensive line draft. I'm not a hundred percent sure what uh what their future is going to be on the defensive line. Uh, it's, uh I don't I'm not quite sure what de- kind of defense they're gonna be running. I think it's gonna be like kind of that three four hybrid kind of stuff with Minter and you have to focus on Justin Herbert at some point. You have to and they're so talent depleted on the outside, they have to figure out how to get him weapons. So I I also don't think that their offensive line is just a disaster because you have Rashawn Slater. Trey Pipkins is a fine right tackle. He's not phenomenal, but he's fine. And taking an interior guy here just doesn't feel like it makes a lot of sense. Now you can take a guy here, play him on the inside for a year and then kick him outside in year two. Like that's fine. But I think Brock Bowers is going to give Justin Herbert a weapon that he so desperately needs. So we're going to go with Brock Bowers there. Denver Broncos. This is a a really weird team. They are going to be in cap hell for the next couple of years. What do they do? Uh, We're not going quarterback. I can tell you that we are not going quarterback. So that Michael Penix isn't worth this pick. Bo Nix certainly isn't. Um, they just might have to gut it out and deal with the fact that they just don't have a quarterback or you take one. I, I believe they have their second round pick. You just take one later or you trade down and then try and get one at towards the end of the round. But I don't think you can take one of those guys here. So let's kind of take a look. Um, I'll take a look at my board here. Dave, is there a way that we can have both this? Uh, we can just have the um, the picks on the screen because we, we've got people in the chat asking for that. And then you can have this like just off to the side. How does that work on your setup? It's I've got to do the up down thing with the PFF. Okay. Yeah, because the way I have it set up on Chrome, it's not up down, it's left to right. So that's why I was asking. Um well, I could Broncos. You're talking about like that. Yeah. People want people were asking about being able to see the the who is taken. Oh. Okay. Broncos, very interesting team. You can kind of go a million different directions for them. I wish we could take a quarterback, but it just doesn't make sense. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go edge rusher for them. We're gonna we're gonna take Laiatu Latu from UCLA. My knowledge here is that the neck is fine, and at the, at the end of the day, that's all we can go off of. We we just have to go off of what we think we know, and like, look, if it comes out that his neck's degenerative and nobody wants to touch him. I won't be shocked. I'll be a little surprised, honestly, but it, it, it's just an interesting dichotomy here because Latu, really great technician. They need edge help, and I, I think it would make a lot of sense. But it's all about the medical score because Latu's got a bunch of tools in his bag, can do a lot of different things from a pass rush standpoint, and I think they could really use that. 
Now, is it necessarily the smartest pick? No, they would love to get a quarterback here. They really would, but that's probably not going to happen. So, lot two to the Broncos. Now, we're going to try and speed through a little bit because we've been we've been going for a little while, and we're only on pick thirteen. But the top of the draft is more interesting than it is towards the back end. So, the Raiders. They just signed Christian Wilkins, so they feel pretty good about their interior. They could still go that direction. They could go quarterback. Running back is way too early. I like the idea of going corner here. Uh, I like that a lot. So we're, we're going to go cornerback, and we're going to go with my number one corner and my number three overall player out of Alabama, Terry and Arnold. I think Arnold is, he's got everything you want. He's he doesn't have like the super, super high end athleticism. He ran a four five, but he on film, he can keep up with anybody. He's got a great click and close ability, great ball skills, and he can play from any alignment in any style of coverage. I think that's going to be really beneficial for a guy like Antonio Pierce, who is the head coach. He's a football guy. He loves football. And I think that could be a really big benefit for uh, that Raiders team. All right, 14th overall. This is going to be easy. The Saints need offensive line. Ryan Ramchek may never play football again. He may have a degenerative knee. If you have a degenerative knee, that's a problem. So we're going to go Olufashanu here. He's my number 11th overall player. And I think his pass protection skills are exemplary. His traits and tools are phenomenal. He's been a three-year starter at Penn State, only 21 years old. Olu Fashanu, I to me, is a slam dunk. And you know what? If Ramchek comes back and he plays well, it doesn't matter. Like, Ramchek just goes back to right tackle, and you have your left tackle and Fashanu, which they need anyways. But they think maybe moving Penning over to the right side could end up helping unlock him as he was their first round, one of their first round picks in 2022. So I'm, I'm going to go with Olu Fashanu. And I think that's probably the best bet. Now, as Dave kind of gets everything squared away He's on trying. his end, I know. Um, let's uh, let's talk about the fifteenth overall pick. That is the Indianapolis Colts. They can go a lot of different directions here. Uh, the Colts are a very very interesting. You want to of Fashano for the Saints? Yes, Fashano. So you can go a lot of different directions with the the Indianapolis Colts. And I'm, I'm really intrigued to see how the board will end up falling for them on draft day because they can do a lot of different things. And I think wide receivers are an, an intriguing need for them. I think you could do you could go offensive line. I think the only thing that it says there is what is it wide receiver and DB. For their two needs? Yes. Yeah. So I think if you're if you're gonna try and follow need, which look, that's kind of what Ballard has done. He's really attacked needs in the draft. I think it, you're looking at you're looking at one of two guys in my mind. It's Quinya Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo, or it's Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver out of Texas, which feels a little rich, but for me. Adonai Mitchell is my 19th overall player, and he's two spots ahead of Quinion Mitchell. So we're going to take the wide receiver out of Texas. Adonai Mitchell, people are going to come at you having conversations about, oh, he's uh, he hasn't really produced in the college game. Why hasn't he done that? Well, played at Georgia, which is a super run-heavy team, and they have Brock Bowers. And then he played one year at Texas, where Quinn Ewers can barely throw five yards. Like, Quinn Ewers is one of the highest ranked recruits of all time. He just hasn't fully put it together. And I, I, I just love that. And Mitchell's game. I think he's a, an elite X receiver and you can do a lot with him. Let's, let's address Dave L's comment. Uh, Minnesota fans hate Knicks. Don't want to be mean or be tonight's troublemaker, but I think it's very uh, reckless to ignore somebody who has the best QB rating in history of college football. Yeah, but his game is not going to translate to the NFL. Um, I recommend, Dave, that you go check out um, our school search on Bo Nix. 
that will answer that entire question for you. Um, why, or I get answer more of the statement why he's being ignored. I just don't think he's any good. 16th overall, Seattle Seahawks. I think this one will be pretty easy. We're going to go uh, Troy Fatanu, the offensive lineman from Washington. Now, Fatanu ranks behind Tavias Fuaga and Tyler Guyton for me, but they're all in the same bucket. It's 86.8 to 86.7 to 86.6. So they're all in the same grouping. But the reason why Fatanu, he has guard flexibility. I think he'd be better at tackle. Uh, he's only six, three and a half, but he's got 34 and a half inch arms. He's got plenty of size to play tackle, but I think he could be an elite guard. And with how that offensive line is set up, if Abraham Lucas just can't continue, you can just slide Fatanu over to right tackle, but it, right away you can start him at guard and you can feel pretty comfortable with that. So Troy Fatanu, Jacksonville Jaguars are another really interesting team. Uh, you could go wide receiver. I don't think they will go wide receiver. Um, there's rumors about Brandon Ayuk. And if Ayuk ends up going there, then they're not going to have this pick anyways. So we're going to go cornerback here. We're going to go Quinya Mitchell, uh, cornerback out of Toledo. They need guys on the outside who can cover. They released Darius Williams, um, who mainly played in the slot for them. Dave, if, if you go up, he's there. He was on the beginning. Three guys down. Uh, I think Quinion can play any alignment. He he proved that he can play press at a very high level. I love his game. And I think that's going to translate one-to-one. Now, let's talk about the Cincinnati Bengals. They need tight end. They need offensive tackle. And they need... Is that defensive interior? I think yes. so. It, it's hard for me to see some of those small letters... I'll work after this to. No, 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 no. It's the. Better. No, Dave. It's because of Ecam. It's not because of you. I can't full screen this. Like, oh. uh, like with Streamyard, you could. I could just full screen, like what the viewers are seeing, and then I could be able to read better. I, I can't do that with Ecam, which is fine. Ecam's a better product, but. No, 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 no. You don't have to. You don't have to f- zoom in. I'll, I'll deal with okay. it. Um, so. I think this one's going to be a really interesting pick because I think offensive line is probably your best bet. I don't think edge rusher is going to be a priority because of what they have in the room. And they just drafted miles Murphy last year. I think Byron Murphy and uh, Johnny Newton are really intriguing options, but they did just lose uh, right tackle Jonah Williams in free agency. And I think getting a really good right tackle is a smart play. We're going to give him Tylius Fuaga, and he's just a mauler. And you know what? I, I think they may have signed a tackle in free agency, and if they did, and I'm just not remembering, guess what? Throw him inside the guard. Feel good about it. So Tylius Fuaga to the Cincinnati Bengals. Now the Los Angeles Rams, they just signed Tredavious White, and... I don't know how they'd feel about going corner, but I do know that they need defensive line. You're never, you're never going to replace Aaron Donald. But if you want a guy who can do some of those things, the quick penetration from the inside, and you need a guy to play on the inside anyways, Johnny Newton from Illinois. So on here, it's Jerzon Newton, but he wants to go by Johnny. So not, a, not all those have been updated yet. Get him in there. You're not going to expect him to be Aaron Donald, and you can never expect anybody to do that. But if you want a guy who can play multiple alignments like Aaron Donald did, you can get pressure from all those alignments. Then you can potentially have some success. But you have to rebuild this defensive line in a different way. You have to rebuild it in your new image. You don't want to build it in the image where Donald was still there. You have to shift your focus. And I think that's kind of how things are going to manifest themselves. So now the Pittsburgh Steelers feels like they've needed a cornerback and offensive line for a long time. So we're going to go in a different direction. I think this is the spot where I think you can feel comfortable going center. 
because I think Jackson powers Johnson from Oregon is a very good prospect. He's the 18th ranked player on my board. I like what uh, Jackson powers Johnson brings you. I think he can do a lot of different things. I think his power is excellent. He's got good movement skills. You're not going to get Zach Frazier at pick. I think it's 53 where the Steelers pick next. Maybe it's 51. It's somewhere in that area. I don't think you're getting him at that spot because I think Frazier probably goes early on in the second round. So they need a center really, really bad. So you take one of good value and a good football player, and it is good value here. I don't love taking interior guys in the first round, but I'd rather take a center than a guard. And I think Powers Johnson will fit well with what Arthur Smith wants to do. And now we're on to the Miami Dolphins, and they desperately need offensive line. So we're going to give them one. We're going to give them a hyper athlete. We're going to give them Oklahoma offensive tackle, Tyler Guyton. Wrote up Guyton, I believe yesterday, maybe it was two days ago. I don't remember. My, my days of the game been kind of blurry. So Guyton is he's, he's going to look similar to what Brian O'Neill did coming out of college. Former tight end, moves like a tight end, very athletic, and is still learning some of the power elements to his game and how to really drive and finish. But I love the potential he's played on both the left and the right side. So Miami has flexibility to try and figure that out. And I think that yeah, it's a really good pick for Miami to make it this spot. And to me, I think it's a, it's a home run 22, the Philadelphia Eagles. They basically take three positions, offensive line, defensive line, and wide receiver in the first round. Well, how we finally change that and go cornerback? He should. He won't, though. Let's just be honest here. So we're, we're going to give them uh, one of those players. I think with everything that they have going on on the offensive line, Lane Johnson could potentially be retiring. You're going to have Cam Jurgens sliding over to take over at center, and you're going to have to find somebody to play guard opposite of Landon Dickerson. I like the idea of J.C. Latham as a as a project who you can play right away. Latham's got experience at guard. He's got experience at left and right tackle. And I think you can do a little bit of everything with him. And Stoutland will be able to take him to another level. Uh, Dave, he's, he's a tackle, not an interior. So, but because he has that ta- uh, guard experience, I think that can be a benefit to kind of building your best group right now. And I love the idea of Latham being able to learn with Stoutland and maybe taking over for Lane Johnson in a year or two. Plus it's just such an Eagles pick. It really is. Um, If Tyler Guyton were here, I think Guyton would make a lot of sense too. 23. We got the Chargers up again. We got Brock Bowers at 11th overall. Uh, after they made the trade with the Vikings, when the Vikings got J.J. McCarthy, they still need wide receiver help. They, You could look at multiple different options for them on offense or defensive line. You could look at corner. I, I, I'll be real. I, 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 would, I would consider going wide receiver here. And if you're going wide receiver, there is... You could go Jalen Polk, who's my number five wide receiver. I have no idea what his draft stock's actually going to be, and I'm I'm pretty high on him compared to the rest of the industry. Xavier Worthy, it ranks pretty high on my board because, I, look, he's got the speed. We all knew he had the speed, and he broke the record in the 40-yard dash. I thought he had a chance to break it going in. At, so my grade didn't change, but the guy I'm going to take, I'm going to take his teammate, and some GMs love to take teammates. Uh Rick Spielman did it in nearly, I think, over half of the drafts that he ended up conducting as the general manager of the Vikings. Not part of the triangle of authority, as the general manager. I think he took teammates, I think it was six of 11 drafts. And it would not shock me to see other GMs do that. So we're going to go Lad McConkey, wide receiver from Georgia. Look, you have Quentin Johnston, who is going to be your yak guy. He's going to be... A, a guy that you're going to get him on crossers. You're going to get him on screens and you're going to just let him do things. 
and you hope you can develop some of that deep game with him because that was very raw coming out. But the one thing he was great at was Yak. Ladd McConkey can get open. He can get open against anything and anyone. So now you have a safety valve for Justin Herbert, and he can do a lot of different things that way. 24th overall, we have the Dallas Cowboys. This is kind of a poor board for the Cowboys because the offensive linemen have been pretty picked over at this point. Uh, we've had seven offensive tackles come off the board. Um, Kingsley uh, Suamataia uh, to BYU is an interesting option. They could go Zach Frazier from West Virginia, but I think it's too early. But they also have Mike Zimmer as the new defensive coordinator. And what is the one thing that Mike Zimmer defenses need to thrive? That is an explosive three tech. So we're going to give him Byron Murphy, the second from the university of Texas. The Cowboys love drafting trench players. And with the addition of Byron Murphy, the second, like I think he's more of a second round guy myself, but a lot of people think he could go like top 15. The type of player he is, will fit so well with what Mike Zimmer wants to do. And his linebackers aren't going to matter nearly as much because hopefully Mozzie Smith comes back at like 340 pounds instead of like 320. And you have that explosive three tech green Bay Packers. Look, I don't know enough about their thresholds to really know who's going to be uh, the guy picked, but I think we're going to make it pretty simple. We're just, we're going to go chalk here. No, Dave, we're not taking a kicker. We're doing a real mock draft. Um, we're going to go Iowa's Cooper to Gene. I don't love to Gene, but he fits the motif of what the Packers want. And quite frankly, their cornerback room, Jair Alexander doesn't feel like the guy he was a couple years ago. Eric Stokes is meh. Like you need to fortify the room. And you know what? At the very least, he could play safety slot corner. He can do a lot of play, a lot of different roles for you early. So I think the versatility of Gene makes a lot of sense. Now we're at, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think this is the team that if he ends up falling, I don't love this player. I don't love Dallas Turner, but that, that freaky athleticism, the ability to get off the ball quick and be long and big. I think that's going to be somebody that Todd Bowles is going to love. So we're going to give Dallas Turner to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that brings us to the Arizona Cardinals who who got Marvin Harrison Jr. early. Now they need to kind of uh, piece it together outside of that. Tackle could be an option here. I'm going to go a little bit of a different route. I'm going to give him Graham Barton, the left tackle from Duke. He's probably going to play on the inside, but he, he's got experience at center. You could put him at guard. And he could play tackle for you in a pinch, but 32 and 78 inch arms, a little bit of a red flag. Could he still play there? Yeah, he could, but I think it's, he's probably going to be better on the interior. Very technically sound an incredibly consistent player. Um, I think it was Jaden that said, uh, surprised you didn't have Zimmer taking another corner. Look, that was a meme, but they were right when they took corners. Because corner is such a volatile position, they were just wrong on the guys they ended up taking. Like they needed to take corners in those spots. But so, you're 100 percent correct. Zim's defense relies on a good three technique defensive tackle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if Sharif Floyd had never had that uh, that goofy knee, uh, the the surgery that ended up going goofy, excuse me, that'd be a whole different story of how mm-hmm. his career turned out. 28 overall, the Buffalo Bills, look, the Bills desperately need a field stretcher. They need somebody who can win deep down the field. They need a guy who can be a big body. Let's give them Gabe Davis, but actually good at football. Let's give them Brian Thomas Jr., who ran a 4-3-4 40-yard dash at at 6'4", almost 210 pounds. I have him currently ranked as wide receiver 8 so he's going ahead of Jalen Polk and Xavier Worthy. But I think the Bills are going to be enamored more with that big guy rather than they would be with just the small guy who runs fast. So we'll give them Brian Thomas Jr., who could see some really good coverage considering Stephon Diggs is on the other side. 
29th overall, Detroit Lions. They Their biggest hole on the team is a pass rush opposite Aiden Hutchinson. Give him Jared Verse. Verse just feels like a guy for Detroit because the way he wins, he wins by attacking you and he wins with power. And, and he's got some other tools in his bag too. But that power ability, I think, is going to take him to a different level. And I'm really, really intrigued to kind of see what that ends up looking like. I think Darius Robinson could also be a fit here. I love Darius Robinson's game. But for me, Jared Verse makes a ton of sense here. Now, we got three picks left. Baltimore Ravens desperately need offensive line. We're going to give them some offensive line help. There's not a ton of high-level offensive line talent, but they need a tackle. And one tackle I do like is from BYU. Kingsley Suamataia. Uh, he was a five-star recruit, went to Oregon, but after a year ended up transferring back to his home state of Utah, played at BYU, and Suamataia, he's got the size, he's got the athleticism, he's got uh, some of the technical elements down. I really like his game, and you can ask him to potentially be the guy to take over for Ronnie Stanley, who seems to be hurt every five seconds. So, and if he's not, he plays right side. No big deal. So two picks left. And now we are at the two picks of the teams who played in the Super Bowl. That is the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. 49ers, they need, looks like defensive line and corner. I think that's what it says. Offensive line and corner. Oh, yeah. They need offensive line. Um, we're going to give them some offensive line help because I think they can get a better cornerback later than they will be able to get an offensive lineman later. We're going to go. Um, Interior I I think he's listed, tackle. I think he's listed a tackle. Um, but he, yep. Uh, Jordan Morgan from Arizona. He's he, he doesn't quite have the length you want as a tackle, but I think you could play him a guard. And at the very least, he's a, an upgrade over Colton McKivitz, but McKivitz is going to play. Uh, they just signed him to a stupid contract, one year, $7 million. McKivitz is bad. Uh, he was bad when I saw him at the Senior Bowl. He was bad in the Super Bowl. He's been bad for a long time. So Jordan Morgan, I think you could have him kick inside. Aaron Banks playing um, on the other guard spot. But if you fix right guard, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable about where this team is going to be this year. So Jordan Morgan goes to the San Francisco 49ers. And that brings up the Kansas city chiefs who they, they could probably use a cornerback, um, but they, they really love their corners to be able to tackle and having corners that can tackle is such an important part of that. Steve Spagnuolo defense. I don't think Nate Wiggins really fits that. I don't think Ennis Rakestraw jr. Does either. Um, Kool-Aid maybe, but I'm not sold on it. So we're going to Dave, let's pull up wide receivers because I think wide receiver is, is a need for them. Um, According they, to BFF, they, got it is. Rashe, they got Rasheed Rice last year, who is a really good underneath guy and he can do some deep stuff, but he's more of a possession type receiver. Scroll down a little bit because we're, we're going to do the meme thing. And I don't think it's a meme pick because I absolutely love, love, love his game. And that we're going to take Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think Worthy is worthy of a late first round pick. Uh, he got a very high second, but he's also fast. You can do some of the stuff you do with Tyree Kill. He is not Tyree Kill. He's not thick enough. He's not strong enough, but damn, is he fast. And if guys can't get to him, well, it, it doesn't matter if he can break tackles. He's just going to make you miss in the open field. I think Worthy could help evolve that offense to continue to fight some of those two high coverages. And I, th I, I really like what Worthy would bring to that team. Nick, I know he is a tackle, but I don't think he's going to play tackle in the NFL. Dave, save that. I want to. I want to be able to use that the picture of this mock draft and kind of, kind of use it for some written content, even. So that that is it. The Vikings end up trading to five. The, uh, some of this is going to be what I think will happen. Some of this is going to be what I th I would do. So it's a it's a little bit of a mixed bag. 
Um, but the Vikings that end up do trading to five, just give up 11 and 23 to go get JJ McCarthy. If McCarthy hits, nothing matters. McCarthy misses, then we're probably replacing our head coach and general manager, but that's the nature of football. That's how it works. If you bomb on a quarterback, you give a bunch of capital for it. You're gone unless you're Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch and nothing matters because you still make Super Bowls. Like they're pretty much immune to that, but the Vikings brass will not be, and they're going to have to figure things out. I like this group. I, I think this is a first round that has a lot of really talented players. I also think there are some guys that we didn't end up picking that could uh, make it into the first round. Nate Wiggins cornerback from Clemson, I think probably goes in round one. Um, He, uh, my highest rated player to not go in round one was um, Jalen Polk uh, 24th overall. Um, He's my wide receiver five. I like him, but I, I think he ends up going like later round two. I just like him more than a lot of other people do. And I'm okay with that. Uh, Chloe McKinstry was my next highest at 27th overall. Like good football players here, Dave. There's some really good football players in this draft. And I'm honestly disappointed. The Vikings don't have any day two picks because there's a lot of day two guys. I really, really like, but if they had on quarterback, who gives a crap? Nothing matters. You hit on the quarterback. That is all for tonight's show. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe. Those subscribes make make a lot of difference for us. And if you ring the bell, anytime we do a short, anytime we go live, when breaking news hits, anytime we do anything, it will be sent to your phone, including to all bloggers on Sunday afternoon, 4.05, the return of Darren, who's finally got his ass off the beach to be back in the saddle with Dave. So you will not want to miss that. And don't forget, we also have some exclusive stuff on the podcast side, including Dave just recorded the NFC North show, Who Will Be King. That will only be on podcasts this week. Sometimes it's on the YouTube channel. Sometimes it's not. But if you want to catch everything we do, you want to make sure you're subscribed to both the YouTube channel and podcast feed. It will make everything better for your life. I promise. With that being said, thank you guys so much for joining us here tonight. I'm Tyler. He's Dave. And one thing we always say, Skull Vikings. Skull Vikings. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. It helps us grow this community that we all love our Minnesota Vikings. And on behalf of Tyler Fornis and myself, Dave Stefano, thank you so dearly for watching The Real Forno Show. Skull, everyone!